Welcome to another episode of Power Bourbon. And after all the comments of the last video where we blindfolded uh, Ed's dickle flight and we asked, you know, who was your favorite? I was really hoping it would be TJ. I, I could have settled for Chuck. I would have cried if it was Brian, but no, across the board, it was Heather. So we brought Heather back. Big surprise. Yeah. Who would have thought? The fan so welcome. Well, thanks, yeah. crowd. <laughs> I also like how everybody thinks I'm the oldest because apparently I'm the most mature. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but uh, tonight we are going to drink something that we probably should have a long time ago, but it's a gimmick and I have a problem with gimmicks and I didn't want to buy it, but I bought it. Uh, mainly for the the podcast Heather and I did do uh, on the side, yeah. and we talked about finishing methods. And this one has a special finishing method, so it was worth picking up and trying. And that is blade and bow. So this is out of Stitzel Weller. Um, Diageo bought the old Stitzel Weller plant, uh, and they when they did that, they got old Stitzel Weller stock. And so they've been using it for this and a method, which Chuck will know something about because he's the wine nerd, which is the Solera method. So basically what they do is they take new make and they put it in new barrels. And then they put some of that into some of the older barrels and then into some older, older barrels and into some older, older barrels, basically just making a fractional blend and slowly pulling out stuff. So they never run out of the original Stitzel Weller uh, bourbon, uh, and they slowly introduce more. Now, obviously, the amount of Stitzel Weller continually goes down, uh, but it technically has old Stitzel Weller bourbon in it. So that's what everybody goes crazy about. And the keys. like There's five different keys, and you can collect them all. Got to get them all. Yep. So that's Blade and Bow. On the plus side, if you get all five keys, you let them know, and they put make you a little mug and put it on a wall and you're part of the key club, which is kind of cool. There's a goal. I'm kind of, I'm kind of speechless. This reminds me of like an old, uh, it's like a philosophical thought experiment that if you have a boat and you replace every board on the boat individually, is it the same boat or is it a new boat? Well, I mean, yeah. Mm. So that's the thing is you started with the original really good sought after bo boat and we are slowly going to whatever this is and we'll tell you if it's something you should seek out. Uh, but yeah, slowly there's going to be less and less Stitzel Weller bourbon in it. Um, and they've even admitted that. So at some point they're going to quit making Blade and Bow. So we'll see. Well, they have to do something new. Yeah, they'll have to, it'll just be all of their bourbon. And I'm sure they'll change the name to something. Blade and Bow 2.0. So, so it is uh, 90 proof. So it is, or 91 proof, excuse me. So it's pretty low proof. Uh, supposedly just a good everyday drinker runs you about 50 bucks. So that's another reason it's been a little uh, touch and go on me trying to do it. But we bought this the same time we bought Jefferson Ocean. We figured why not buy a whole bunch of expensive, low-proof whiskey. So, <laughs> why not? <laughs> well, there's not much on the nose for me at all. Like a little It'll... sweetness, but a little yeah, brown sugar. Similar. Yeah. Little, maybe a honey. Yeah. Get a little bit of like a, a light straw, uh, but that's about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not very exciting. No. The palate is like liquid honey. Mm -hmm. It's really sweet to me. Yeah. But there is a slight like baking spice peppery hug on the end, which mm -hmm. I'm impressed for 91 proof, but it is also oh, but our first bourbon of the night, so... Which is how you should experience a 90 proof bourbon. Yeah. Don't start with the 115, go backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the sweet dominates through the palate for me. I don't, I'm not getting a lot of spice. I get something that I, I'd probably call it more of a, a floral note. 
that kind of yeah. accompanies that honey sweet, like maybe a, a honey lavender, but man, that's it. It's mostly, mostly the sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Can't say I'm a huge fan. Mm-mm. At $50 uh, for a palate opener. I'm going elsewhere, I think. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's not really worth uh, trying to get. How many of these would you have to get? Five, you said? Yeah, five. Keys. Can you imagine buying five bottles nah, this is... of the same thing just to get a different key? No. Nope. And they're smart. In case you're thinking, you're like, oh, I see that key could just slip off. <laughs> it's uh, like waxed up in there or something and originally and you use the key to break off the seal. So, oh, so you can't just go around hunting and then try to like no. pull off the key. No, that's that's a no, no. They thought ahead on that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't really say I'd recommend this like. So I mean, what about Stitzerwella would have made this special? Everyone pretty much agrees. The height of bourbon, the pinnacle of the best bourbon out there mm-hmm. was Stitzelweller bourbon. That's why like the old dusty Stitzelweller just goes for crazy amount of money on auctions and everything like that. So, okay. But my question is like, what's truly making the bourbon? Is it the mash bill? Or is it the aging process? So it's it's a combination it's of above. things. Yeah, it's the mash bill. It's, it's myth. the it's legend. Yeah, it's... The entry, <laughs> the entry proof, the temperature that the world was at during that time it was aging. The, the, the grain that was different yeah. because plant breeders have messed everything up. You know. I, yeah. It's, it's, so it's Chuck's fault that we don't have good bourbon. Well, he does sweet corn, so it's the field corn people's fault. That's right. It's That's why that he's a sweet corn breeder. He can't be part of the or field corn stuff yeah i just feel like it doesn't matter like oh this is what went into it but it all depends on the age after that yeah so mm. well we'll just have to go to like a vintage bourbon shop and get a pour so it okay at neat like last i checked that's a water is like 500 dollars an ounce what <laughs> That better be the most delicious thing you've ever tasted. I'm willing to make this sacrifice. <laughs> That's out of Chuck's price range. <laughs> uh, hmm. so yeah. Well, I guess in the meantime, we'll just keep drinking this and say we've been sampling. Yeah, I mean, to be fa- fair, there is a Blade and Bow 22, which is also down in the 90 proof range. I think it's like four hundred dollars a bottle maybe a little bit more and suppose that that's all that's a weller mm. so but off the regular blade and bow i would say it's a hard pass for me mm. yeah i actually had some weller special poured over here so i just took a took a quick comparison the nose is much better on the on the weller i the i might give the finish to the to the blade and bow um Palette, I think, still think I lean Weller Special. Uh, price for retail uh, of Weller Special is quite a bit cheaper. I think for my low proof bourbons, you know, if you're going more entry level as far as cost, I'm probably still leaning towards uh, Wild Turkey 101, still leaning towards uh, Four Roses Small Batch, Knob Creek 100, Nine Year, um, or uh, one of our favorites for low proof. At a little bit more price is Widow Jane, ten year, yeah, um, and that's twenty dollars more at seventy bucks. So, I don't think this has a place for me on my shelf. Yeah, I would agree. You you don't need to purchase this again. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> Heather's like TJ. Do not yeah. purchase this again. Not for the channel. Yeah, <laughs> I would much rather we get another Jefferson's Ocean. Yeah, to like oh, try wow. another voyage. Because that was that was about the same proof, right? Yeah, the lower proof. Same proof. Yeah, I do know it's more expensive. It, mm-hmm. That runs what, like almost eighty? It's like yeah. 70, 70 to eighty. So a little bit more, but oh, I think it's a lot more interesting. There's just nothing really interesting about this other than yeah. the key. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, in the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a marketing boy. So once again. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments below. Have you 
done blade and bow what do you think are we completely crazy i mean heather's here and she agrees with us so we can't be crazy so uh we'll see you next time Stay cheers neat.